So first of all, I'd like to say good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. And welcome to the Hudson Library and Historical Society's virtual event with Susie Carter, author of the book, How Are Your Profits? How to Take Your Business from $10,000 to $10 million. Tonight's program kicks off our annual fall entrepreneurship series here at the library. We have an exciting lineup of fun and educational programs for entrepreneurs of all sizes. Um, on Wednesday, October 7th, we will be welcoming entrepreneur, investor, and founder of Schmidt's Natural, Jamie Schmidt, um, to discuss her new book, Supermaker. Schmidt will also talk about how she grew a line of organic deodorants from small farmers markets to a rumored nine-figure buyout from Unilever. For any makers also into tonight's audience, we'll be offering a multi-part intermediate Etsy entrepreneurship series designed for any Etsy crafters and makers who want, wish to grow and expand their existing store. That series will take place in October. Finally, our eighth annual pitch competition is scheduled for November. Join us and enter your ideas for a business or product in the Shark King competition for your chance to win $5,000. Applications for our annual pitch competition will open this coming Monday, October 5th. For more information to register or apply or sign up for any of our entrepreneurship programs, please feel free to visit our website at hudsonlibrary.org. I would also like to let everyone know that tonight's program is being aired both on Zoom and the Hudson Library's Facebook page. We will be accepting audience questions throughout the second half of tonight's program, and at any time, please feel free to leave your questions. If you're on Zoom, you'll see the Q&A bottom at the down below and you can submit your questions there. You can also use the chat box. If you're on Facebook, again, just leave your questions as a comment and we'll add them to tonight's list. Now, I would like to introduce tonight's speaker, Susie Carter. Susie Carter is a globally recognized profitability coach and former CEO of Motivating the Masses Incorporated, an international transformation and training company for small business owners. With over 20 years of experience, Carter has successfully worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and small business owners to raise their profits and growth, including two companies who raised their profits over $10 million. Her work has been featured in the New York Times, the Associated Press, the United States Chamber of Commerce, and NBC News. Tonight, there will be copies of Carter's book, Power Your Profits, available for purchase courtesy of Hudson's own local independent bookshop, The Learned Owl. We will have a link in the chat for easy access to purchase. Also, for anyone, for everyone who purchases a book through the Learned Owl, you can redeem five free bonuses worth, let me see how much again, valued at more than $3,500, <laughs> um, courtesy of Susie. To redeem your bonuses, you'll simply email your receipt of purchase to Susie at Susie at SusieCarter.com. Again, we will have the email in the chat including the link for you to purchase. So everything you need to know will be right there in the chat for you. Um, some of those freebies, by the way, Susie can talk about them a little bit more, but there are some really valuable worksheets, um, some training about how to propel your profits. There's also a secret Facebook group. There's a business toolkit, and you can even have the chance to win an hour private co coaching session with Susie. Now, I believe I've talked more than enough, so without further ado, please join me in providing a virtual warm welcome to Susie Carter. Please take it away. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you guys are doing to help us, the entrepreneur, because we need help. And tonight, I'm going to just give you some nuggets inside of the book and just really share what I've learned the hard way, right, in owning a business, building a business and really how to turn your small business into a profit powerhouse because there is a system for it. So Kels, you can see my screen, yes? Just give me a yeah. Yes, so I can see your screen. Perfect, so the first thing I wanna do is look at how you can leverage your existing business or the business you wanna start. So I want you to get your notepads out, I want you to get your pen out because you're gonna feverishly write because we're gonna go fast and we're gonna go exciting. I'm gonna teach you how to scale your business more importantly, how to set it up to sell. You wanna build a business to sell it, right? So from day one, I want you to look at how do I build my business to sell? Then I wanna share with you how to build a business so that it provides you a life that's unrecognizable. A business should provide us freedom. A business should provide us a lifestyle that a job can't do. 80% of small businesses are doing less than $100,000 a year. 2.5% of businesses are doing 250,000 to half a million dollars a year. And only 1.7 businesses are doing a million plus a year. So I want you to put in the chat, if you wanna be part of my million dollar club, 
That's my goal is to get our businesses into the million dollar businesses, right? And I have three promises for you. One, I'm going to give you a roadmap and a plan about your big why and why do you need to focus on these areas of your business? We want to discover the 10 highest income producing activities you should be working on. I want you to look at, we'll reveal the 80% of would-be successful entrepreneurs and what stops them from reaching their goals and show you how you can overcome it. Listen, I have been doing this for a long time and the first thing I had to really work on, guys, is my mindset. And I need you to know that wealth is your birthright. This is not something I was taught. This was not a natural thing that I had to go through. I grew up in a really big family. Bobby, Ronnie, Stevie, Terry, Joni, Shelley, Susie, Kelly, Debbie. There was nine kids, six girls, three boys, 1,200 square feet, one bathroom. I know y'all, I don't know how we did it. I go back in that home today and I look at it like, where did we all go to the bathroom at, right? How did we all sleep? There's only three bedrooms. I don't know. My parents were a master at a budget, but they never talked about wealth. They never talked about money, right? So our goal, my dad's goal when we graduated from high school was get a job and get married. There wasn't talk about college. There wasn't talk about building wealth. And all this stuff is I self-taught myself. So I am the profit coach. My clients deemed me that. I didn't give myself that name. My clients gave me that name. They said, Susie, you know what you do for us? I'm like, strategy? They're like, no, you make us money. You find us money everywhere. You're the profit growth coach. So my goal is when I work with clients, whether you read the book, whether you take a course, that we exponentially explode your business. Now we've, just as Kelsey said, we've been in New York Times, Wall Street Journal, We've been in a plethora of PR and press all talking about how do we build wealth and how do we build profitability? I know it's a little obnoxious and you can't even see it all, but I want you to know that we're serious about making a difference for entrepreneurs. I'm serious about making a difference in entrepreneurs. So I've had seven businesses, seven multi-million dollar businesses, 10 businesses, two dismal failures. Got to be honest with that. My first business was a salon. I borrowed $40,000 from an investor for that business. I didn't have any money. So I want you to see there's money all around you. I had to pay back 15% interest and that's high. But at the time, you might as well set a million dollars. I didn't have any money. I wrote my first book in 1995. I borrowed $25,000 from my husband's 401k. You guys, I didn't even have that. As a hairdresser, I was making a quarter of a million dollars a year, three days a week. We launched our training and development company, we went into $40,000 worth of debt. We were paying our lifestyle on our credit cards to build our business. How radical are you willing to have it? I want you to put that, I'm willing to be radical. I'm willing to be radical to reach my dream and reach my goal. We then launched the largest training and development company in the beauty industry. We bootstrapped that and then we sold that business for millions to Thompson Learning, became a best-selling author. We launched the largest online platform in the beauty industry and we raised a million dollars from private investors. And so where did I learn how to do that? I learned from books, I learned from courses. How do you raise private equity? We built the largest online membership and won the top number two place. And we got the second runner up for the top technology award from Microsoft. I knew nothing about technology. I want you to know that sometimes your own limitations of what you can do and can't do is right up here, right? I then took over one of the largest training and development companies outside of the beauty industry, right? When I sold my business, I had a non-compete. So I went into a different industry, which was the entrepreneurial space. And largely because clients would say, can you coach me? Can you help me? And I didn't think I had what it, what it took to be an entrepreneur coach because I only knew one market. I quickly learned by helping people that Business is business is business. So then launched that business, took it from 80,000 to 10 million. Now, I want you to know that my education is a lot like this. My education was bootstrapping. My education was books. I'd go to the bookstore and I'd learn. I do have my PhD. That's my public high school diploma. Just want you to know that. <laughs> but I do have hundreds of thousands of dollars in education, but it's very much like this. What did I need to learn and how did I implement it? As a single mom raising two daughters, I had to figure out quickly, how do I make money? These are my babies today. They're a little older, but when I first got divorced, they were six months old and 18 months old. And I had no child support and no alimony. I had to figure out quick, as many of us do, 
how to turn my life around, how to make money. And today they're both very successful in their own right because they help me in my business. They help me do the things that I needed help with to grow my business. So I share that to say, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I used to take them to the library and I would sit down and read my business books and they would sit down and read their books and we'd sit on the floor and have all these books around us. I love it. I still love books today. I love the feel of them, the smell of them. Don't you guys love books? Love, love, love them. So I started coaching clients and I coached Lisa Nichols. She was one of the top teachers in The Secret. We took her business, coached her from 2002 to 2018 and we created a multi-million dollar brand. When I started working with her, she was doing $80,000 a year. We got a seven figure book deal for her first book. We got a $750,000 book deal for her second book. She's been on Oprah, Larry King, Today Show. We took the company public. We systematized her business. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I need you to see you. I need you to see you in one of these people, whether you relate to me or you relate to one of my clients so that you know that when you understand the system, when you understand the process, you unlock your dreams. We built an online money machine, online money machine, consistently closing anywhere from $10,000 to $30,000 a month in online sales. Closed, we, when I met her, she was closing 4%, consistently now to 67%. We created seven new high ticket sales, like looking at what was the highest income producing activity only she could do. I need you to write that down. What's the highest income producing activity only you can do? And let's start monetizing that. We grew her database to over 600,000. We grew her social media to over a million followers. We increased her personal wealth and increased her income over 5,000%. That is bananaramas. I had to look at that. 5,000%. And here's the best, the good news. If the best part is if she can do it, you can do it. The best part is if I can do it, you can do it. Now, we're going to do a rating because I love ratings, right? I love digging in and looking at what do I want to do and how do I want to do it. So I want you to pay attention if this is you. If you want to build a business from startup to 10 million, then this, this whole conversation is for you. This is for people who are radical action takers. This isn't for the idea people like, oh, that was a great idea. No, I want you to implement what you hear so that you can have something different. This is for people who know what they want and they are passionate and have purpose and they're ready to take radical action in their business. And it's ready for you now. So what I wanna do is I wanna rate yourself. Now I love doing these, um, when you do little assessments or checklists, because I love seeing what I think is happening in my business versus someone else just telling me what's going in my business. By the end of this, you're gonna have a roadmap of what do you need to focus on first? What do you need to focus on first? Now, when we rate yourself, you're gonna write down on the piece of paper one through 10. So uh, get on your paper one through 10. One means you're not good at this. Five means you're okay with it. 10 means you rock this house. So I want you to think about that. And I'm gonna give you each point that I'm gonna talk about. And before you rate yourself, when you see the numbers, don't rate yourself yet. Let me explain it and then you wanna rate yourself. Okay, so everyone's clear. Put yes in the chat box if you're clear so I can see you. Let me pull this up so I can see you. Awesome. I'm gonna put that over there. I'm looking over here because that's where my chat box is. Yes, Marie's ready. Yes, clear. Michael, clear. Michelle, clear. Awesome, Lisa, very clear, awesome. Edward, awesome. Okay, first one. The first one is, number one is, I understand my ideal client. Now, when you're building a business, one of the first exercise any marketer does is who's your ideal client? The ideal client is how much money I make, what's my demographic, what's my psychographic, what's my geographic? Geographic is where, so if you have an online business or we're serving our clients online, just like we are here, right? We can be anywhere in the world and we can give information. How much money they make? How Are they two income family, one income family? Are they male? Are they female? Are they this age or they're that age? That's the ideal client. The second piece that most marketers forget to tell you is we want to look at qualified. Qualified means I'm interested in what you have and I can write a check or I can swipe my card. The difference is you're thinking fans, people who are in your Facebook, people who are in your database, 
you're thinking those are clients. They're not clients. And half of the people in the database aren't even qualified clients. Qualified means I am ready to write the check and I'm ready for what you have. So I want you to look at, do you really understand your qualified client and rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? And whatever that number is, you can put it in the chat. Awesome. Edward put five, he's on it. I love it. Eight, four, one. She said yes, or he said yes. So, so rate yourself number one. Number two, you have a strong, awesome. Jamie put seven, Lisa put one. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you have a strong online sales strategy. We call that back of the head money. <laughs> back of the head money, Jamie, is when money comes in and you don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to pick, you know, do anything. You don't have to be speaking like here. It's just coming in. My phone will go ding, 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 ding when I have sales coming in. I love it. It doesn't annoy me at all. So do you have a strong online sales strategy where back of the head money is coming in? And rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 and put your number in the chat. Megan Makita said three on the previous one. Awesome. I just want to say, Jamie put three and you have a strong online sales strategy. Now, before I go any further, you're going to pick up a stick and we have a tendency to hit ourselves. Like we're not good enough. Oh my gosh, I, I don't have it right. It's okay. I want you to breathe. You don't have to have it right. We just have to now know what we don't know. So find time and just let that go and go through this process. I promise I'm going to give you gems at the end of this. So number three, I have an automated follow-up sequence. What that means is when someone does come into your community, whether it's your business, if you have a um, physical business, uh, or if you have an online business, you have an automated follow-up sequence. So when you purchase the book, you get a thank you email. And from the thank you email, you'll get access to all those bonuses Kelsey was talking about earlier. That's part of my follow-up sequence. And then I start talking to you, what have you implemented? What do you need next? How can I serve you? Come to this event, come to that event. It's equivalent to if you were having a conversation with me along the way, what would you say? But this is all automatic. You're not thinking about it. You're not doing it. You set it up in the beginning. Um, Charles Givens wrote a book, Wealth Without Risk. And he said, when you start any project, any business, you have to put 10 units of energy in to get one unit of result. Once you get the momentum going, you put one unit of energy in to get 10 units of result. So this startup phase and the things I'm telling you now are the 10 units of energy, which can be very frustrating. 88% of small businesses fail in the first five years, I think because they never get out of the 10 units of energy. And then they get frustrated, then we feel defeated, and then we go, I'm just not gonna try. Or we go to something else. So I want you to look at, do I have automated follow-up sequences for my clients and rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. Now, Kathy Kidd came to me and she didn't have any of those three things together. She didn't have any of the 10 things I'm gonna give you. And upon meeting her in her first year, I need you to look at that, her first year, we increased her revenue by 800%. We generated over $2.1 million. Her social media grew by 1,400%. We improved her systems, her team building, her management skills, just by looking at the things that I'm talking about today. We put financial projections and we made it fun. Write down math is money and money is fun. We may not like math, but I love what math can do for me. I love what money can do for me. So I taught her away and we teach you in chapter eight in math is money, money is fun. I teach you what are the things you need to put in place so that you don't have to get all stressed out about money. And look at the next bullet. We increased her profits by 800%. Somebody write boom in there. Somebody write boom in there because you need to see boom. If she can do it, you can do it. If she can do it, you can do it. She's a publisher and she does the Authorpreneur Academy. And she went from publishing five books a year to 156 books a year to now over 250 books a year. We have 480 best selling authors. We focused on qualified leads versus leads. And 80% of her business is generated by social media. So I want you to look at there's money all around you. Type that in the chat. There's money all around me. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Megan. There's money all around us. And again, Kathy was living out of her savings, borrowing from her retirement account when she met me. And we started step by step by going through the process of what I'm taking you through now. Josie. So number four, I have a strong, effective lead magnet. Now listen, 
Lead magnets are when you have someone coming into your business, they have someone coming onto your website to raise their hand to say, I'm interested. This is all about your list building. Your list building minimum, I want you to have 50 new leads coming in a month. We have anywhere between 600 and 1200 new leads coming in every single month. That is a combination. I want you to look at business is like this combination lock. Remember in school when you used to have these combination locks, Lisa and Cecilia and Megan, one little tick off and that lock wouldn't open, right? You couldn't open the lock. You'd have to go around and do it again and do it again. If you went the wrong way, it wouldn't open. If you went this way, it wouldn't open. You had to get that combination exactly right and then it would open. Well, that's what business is. That's what we're, that's what a really effective lead magnet is. Like when I first started doing this, my lead magnet was so overwhelming that people just didn't do anything after that. They're like, this is too much. So I'm like, okay, let me focus on my combination lock. Let me focus on my combination lock so I can open the combination. So rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How effective is your lead magnet? Number five, you have a clearly defined product suite. We call this our revenue wheel. What I see the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs are making is they have too many products with too many competing prices and too much of a duplicate information. Let me say that again, too many products, too many competing prices and too much um, duplicate information. So I want you to look at, so we have our book, Power Your Profits. So from Power Your Profits, we have what we call Bullet Train to Big Profit. It's the same content, but now I walk you through step-by-step -step on video, right? So you get the book, then you get the video. Then the next course is what we call our boot camp. That's three chapters of the book, three chapters of the book. Now I walk you through it through videos, walk you through a comprehensive workbook, do a mastermind call and have a coaching call with me three chapters. The more intimacy and the more access they have with you, the higher the price you charge. Our next level pricing is our global leadership. Same content, just more access to me. It's a year long. I'm hand holding you to build you a 10, where's my 10 million? $10 million company. $10 million company. I want you to build your foundation on cement, not sinking sand. So I want you to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. One means I don't really have a clearly defined product suite. I created something and I'm waiting for people to come. Or I have a lot of products, I haven't prioritized them. So rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. You can put that in the chat box. Megan said, genius, restructure, repurpose, new revenue. And she said, oof, one. <laughs> one is perfect. One is perfect, right? Because now you know it's a one. Now we can start digging in and making that different. Where's yours, Lisa? Where's yours, Marie? Put it in there, Cecilia. Put it in there, Amanda. Put it in there so I can see Lisa one. Good. Listen, put the stick down. Like Megan said, oof, let's put the stick down. I don't want you to feel like you don't have the answers because you know where the answers are? Right here. You know where the answers are in our community. You know where the answers are in communities like this. So don't, so just breathe for a minute. Breathe. Now, number six, I have a strong social media strategy. That means you have calendars, your profiles are beautiful and they're um, professional. You have engagement, you have a social media ad campaign going. The ad campaign leads to number four, which is your strong lead magnet. So uh, each one of these supports each other, just like a building block, right? So if you look at your business like a little building block, just like this, right? These are little building blocks, right? We're just gonna keep building it until you have a nice strong foundation. So your social media strategy, if you are posting and ghosting, that's not a strategy. A strategy is where you sit down and you plan out a month, a quarter, and a year so that it frees you up to do other things. And I want you to rate yourself, awesome. Edward said two, Mason said one, 841 said two from the clearly defined product suite. Now I want you to look at social media and, and rate yourself on social media. So thank you guys for playing. It makes a big difference for me to know that you're there. Listen, Esther is a client of mine and she came to me. She owned a child, early childhood development center and was doing great, right? So she was at a seven figures, but she wanted something more. And so we published her first book and she became an international best-selling author. You guys, there's strategy for that. 
She didn't have one through seven. One through seven was not systematized and organized. So when I looked at her, she had all twos and fives and threes and ones. And we started putting structure in place. We purchased another early childhood development center because we had all these systems from the one, the first one, that we could put into the second one. We grew her speaking platform. We created an online training program and sold out at her first event. And at her first event, we did a six-figure event. That's $100,000, just so you know what that six-figure event means. Her business grew by 65%. Give me a boom, Edward. Put a boom in there. 65% by following the strategies that we're giving you, <clears throat> by giving you the tools that we're giving you. Her business coaching and her coaching business increased by 100%. We're no longer leaving money on the table. That's what I want you to see, Pamela, Lisa, Mason, Marie, Megan. I want you to look at all the money that's on the table, and I want it to go in your pocket. I want it to go into your future, into your home, into your family versus spending a lot of money to build a business and getting a little bit of a return. So if Esther can do it, you can do it. Okay, number seven, I have a strong marketing plan. The marketing plan is what are we doing every month, every quarter, every six months, every year? So what campaigns are we running? What touch points and engagement campaigns are we running? Now, if you don't know what those words mean, don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out at all because I got you covered. I got you covered. I want you to know in our marketing section in chapter seven on page 215, I lay out your marketing plan. We give you a marketing calendar. Inside of the book, we give you a marketing calendar. So I want you to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. This took me a while to get because I thought sales and marketing were the same and they're not the same. So really look at what do I need to do to get my message out there to start to get people in. Now, I promised you on my bullets that I'll give you, give you what 80% of would be successful businesses do but fail. Well, I need you to rate yourself, Mason, Pamela, on the side of the strong marketing plan. Thank you, Mason. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm looking over here because my chat's over here. Lisa, one, awesome. Marie, one, awesome. And then don't get mad that you're a one. Just go, wow, I only have a one. This, this is a place that we get to start like a roadmap. Now, number eight, Edward, thank you, three. Number eight, I understand my pricing, pricing model, and charge what I'm worth. Now, listen, I don't know if you, but when I first started my business, Lisa, I went, how much does Lisa charge? How much does Mason charge? How much does Edward charge? How much does Kelsey charge? How much does Alexander charge? I'm like, okay, well, they charge a thousand, they charge 200, they charge 500. I'm going to charge 750. And you just pull it out of your hiney. And the reality that has nothing to do with how much you should charge. So in chapter eight, math is money, money is fun. I give you something called the base price worksheet. So now you no longer guess what your price has to be. You know exactly what your price has to be. That was a game changer for me when I learned that. It took me probably seven years, Lisa, to figure that out of my business. Nobody was teaching this. Nobody was telling you all the behind the scenes. They were giving you guesstimates. I don't want to give you guesstimates. I want to give you the meat and potatoes so you can make a profound difference inside of your business. That's just juicy, juicy, juicy. I have a little sign here that says juicy <laughs> so that you could, we could play. Okay, number nine, I have my back-end systems in place. Now, what's back-end systems? So that's going to be your search engine optimization. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Megan. I'm getting there on my pricing. Yes, yes. So I have my back-end systems in place. Your back-end systems are your CRM, which is your customer service, your customer relationship management. Your customer relationship management is how I'm getting my clients, what am I doing with them so that I can automate them. What kind of PR tools are you using if you're using any? What's your search engine optimization? How are people finding you? We have to really focus on your SEO. So if we build a website, the SEO keeps you in front of them, keeps you in front of them, right? We're tweaking our SEO all the time. It's the combination, Mason, Megan, it's the combination. The SEO, when I add a new product, I've got to add the, those taglines so that you can find me. Okay, so rate yourself. I have my back-end systems in place. How are we charging people? How are we collecting money? We've got to collect money. We want your phone to go ding, 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 ding. 
right? So that, that means money's coming in. I love that piece, right? So rate yourself on what are, how are my back end systems? So Edward said zero, Lisa said one, Kristen said two, juicy, 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 right? It's a place that we're starting. It's a place that we're starting. Mason said two, awesome, thank you. Such a great analogy, thank you, Megan. Okay, number 10, your financial growth. This is the foundation of everything. Type everything in the chat, everything. Everything we do. The financial growth and the financial indicators, thank you, Kelsey, give us what we need to, what we need to do every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every six months, every year. When you understand what, it, what is it that we have to do, I'm like a little Xerox machine. Just tell me what I need to do, do, show me what I need to do, and then I can do it. That's in my goal setting. That's in my achieving. I'm tracking everything so I can see how many people do I need to be in front of every single day, week, month, year, in order to make my financial goals. Everything comes back to that math which again is chapter eight, math is money, money is fun. It was so torturous for me to do this piece. I got Mike, there's gotta be a simpler way. So I wanted to show you what is the simple way. Naomi Sodomin came to me and she was an author, a coach of a business and she coached women on how to leave a job and go into creating your own business. Well, she quit a $250,000 a year job as, as a nurse, and then went into wanting to coach other moms and people leaving their job, going into their own business. So I said, well, first of all, we have to create credibility. So we first thing we did is had her write a book and created a number one best-selling author. International, look at the international. So when you look at their strategy for everything, I didn't know that. I just thought you had to write a really, really great book. And you do have to write a really, really great book. And then we have to put the sales and the marketing behind that book, right? And the finance. We created a group coaching program for her. And when you know the system, then you can start collecting money and enrolling people, right? If you don't know how to sell in chapter six of Power Your Profits, I give you my sales script that I've been using for 25 years. I close $100,000 clients with this sales script. That's on page 198. Skip the rest of the book and go right there if you don't know how to sell. It's everything, I promise you. So we looked at her pricing strategy and we set her strategy for growth. We put her financial projections to generate $250,000 a year and she exceeded that. We closed five coaching clients at $7,500 each from her Facebook community. We looked at the marketing and what did we need to do to get those five clients? I taught her the sales strategy. How do you convert those clients with my script? It's not sprinkle fairy dust. It's from my script. Her biggest win of all, she became a full-fledged CEO, right? This is the roadmap of how you build a successful business. So now what I want you to do is I want you to add up your score. In an ideal world, but know that Megan, Kelsey, Marie, Lisa, Mason, there, if no one, no one has ever gotten a hundred. I wouldn't even get a hundred right now. Why? Because my business is growing and we're growing by double digits. So I'm constantly tweaking my systems. I'm constantly tweaking all the things. I'm looking at what's the combination here? What's the combination there? Is it opening? Is it not opening? Megan said 20.5 with big old eyeballs, <laughs> right? Um, so what'd you get, Kels? What'd you get, Lisa? What'd you get, Marie? And what I want you to do is circle your lowest scores. And if you're like, Susie, I only got 20. Of course, all, they're, all of them are low. Okay, if they're all low, we're gonna start with the financial projections. The financial projections give us the roadmap of where we need to go. So we'll start there. From the financial projections, then we go, who's the ideal client? And are they qualified? The projections to the ideal client. That will allow us I love it. Edward said between minus five and to a plus four. Good job. I want you to acknowledge yourself, Edward, because the, the truth will set you free. We first have to know before we can do any kind of changing. So I want you to focus on what's the highest income producing activity only you can do. And then we want to delegate the rest of the stuff. Go work on the things that are going to make us fast cash now. And we've got a great training called fast cash now that will help you get your fast cash right? 
So it's one of the bonuses you get when you purchase the book, right? It's called Power Your Profits and it's fast cash. How do I get you into the fast cash? So listen, you need to take action and action changes things. Benjamin Franklin said, take the coins from your purse, invest them in your mind, and your mind will fill your purse overflowing. So when you purchase the book, and the book is $20, when you purchase the book, you get some bonuses. So you buy the book from Hudson's book, right? And we'll get the link there. And then I'm gonna give you some bonuses. And let me show you the bonuses. What you have to do is you have to send your, your receipt from the book to me, and I will put my email back in the chat again. And from that, we'll put you into our bonus category. So number one is propel your profits in 60 minutes. That's the fast cash that I'm talking about. Number two is wisdom and wealth. This is nine audio programs that talks about reshaping your money mindset. You guys, Lisa, I had to reshape my money mindset. I did not have a positive money mindset. I said, my money mindset was I'm broke. I don't have any. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if yours was the same, right? Edward, mine was, I don't have any. Lisa, I don't have any, right? So I had to retrain myself. And then you get to come into our insiders Facebook group where we ask tons of questions and do a lot of training just like this. You get our Power Your Profit Business Toolkit. Now, what is that? It says $300, but let me tell you, it is priceless. It is, it's six of my favorite, my favorite templates. Because in the book, I give you tools and templates and spreadsheets. I don't like spreadsheets, but I like what these ones do. I put three numbers in, it gives me some data on how, how to upsell my clients and how many qualified clients I need. And then bonus number five, we're gonna pick one winner to have a private coaching session with me. And that's a $5,000 value. This is juicy. So we take that list, Edward, Marie, Lisa, Megan, we take that list and then we pick a name. So from this group that buys from this group, I'll pick one name from this group when you purchase the book today. Um, and then we'll give you access to all those free bonuses. So juicy, juicy, juicy. What I wanna do now is I, I, we've got a, a little bit of time left. So I'm gonna bring Kelsey back on and we're gonna answer some questions. If you have some questions, I love it. Delzenia's here, Delzenia's from our tribe. Yes, it is juicy. She's purchased the book already. Delzini is an amazing artist, right? Megan is an amazing crafter. She, look, she did this on my wall. She created all our little ad specialties to help me grow my brand. How fun is that hat? Maybe we'll do a contest with that next time, Kels, right? <laughs> okay, so let's see. Do you have any Maticos in the house? Woo -woo. Some Matico is another client. I love it. All my people are coming out to support us. They've been in a three-day summit with me already. You'd think they'd be tired of me, Kelsey, but they're not. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I know that your book is focused more on the for-profit industry and libraries. We're traditionally, obviously, nonprofit with like priceless value. But I thought a lot of your points were even important for nonprofits to think about. What is our value? What are we what is our purpose? And especially your marketing section, um, you know, as part of the library's marketing team, I think there's some very valuable information I can even take to help improve our, our goals and our strategy. So thank you for that. I just You're like welcome. That. And can um, so, I, may I say something to that? Yeah. Yes. A lot of my clients who are in nonprofit think the same thing, but the reality is a nonprofit business doesn't mean profit. There is no profit. It nonprofit just means our tax steps. So mm -hmm. it's just what we're filing. We still have to have profit for the shareholders. We still have to have profit for the board members. We still have to have mm -hmm. profit for our committees. So it shows we're still a healthy, viable business. So business is business is business. I want to make you as profitable as you can so we can give you raises. We can give you health insurance. We can give you bonuses. So I still have to take care of my team as a nonprofit entity. So what, if anyone on the call is in the same position, really it's just a filing tax right? And so the, the modules still um, apply to exactly what you're up to and what you're doing. Right. Fantastic. Um, so like I said, I think there's a lot of valuable information in um, your book. So thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom tonight. Um, so for, any, for everyone who has questions, though, we're going to open this up to the audience now. So this has been a very interactive program for our author programs, and I love that. So down below, there's a Q&A box feel free to go ahead and submit any questions you have. Maybe you would like something clarified more. Maybe you would like some advice. Um, just anything that you feel that you would like to ask Susie. 
Similarly, if you're on Facebook right now, please feel free to put your questions in the comments and we will go ahead and um, bring those over to our Zoom meeting as well. So let's see, we're gonna give it a moment for some comments to go ahead and start filtering in. So one of the questions I get all the time, and I'll do this while you're doing mm -hmm. that so that we can fill the white space, is how do I set up my pricing? And I want you to know that profit is planned for. Profit is the value that we as business owners bring to the organization. So you know, it's kind of like, how much money am I going to save? There's never any money left to save, right? Something always happens. There's always some emergency. If, it's, if profit's not planned for, we will miss our profit. So I want you to look at when you do the base price worksheet in chapter eight, when you do the base price worksheet, there's a, there's a line for profit. Minimum profit you want is 10%, minimum. Every industry has its standard, right? So I want you to let's, let's plan, right, for 25%, 30%. I have a doctor, Dr. Judy, that she wanted 50% profit. So I'm like, great, let's work the numbers background, backwards. And so we took her business from 1.4 to 4.8, all doing reverse engineering based on her goals. That's how we came up with the pricing. That's how we came up with capacity. So there's a formula for everything. So we're not just making it up. There's a lot of creativity in being an entrepreneur. I love that about being an entrepreneur. Well, what I really love, Kelsey, is no one's the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So we actually just got some questions in the chat. So I'd like to do those before they get um, buried. So Amanda wants to know, is that 10% after I pay myself? Should I yes. be paying? Should I be paying myself, I guess? Absolutely. So Amanda, what you want to look at is what would I be paid in a job? So if I'm a CEO of a company, right, I want to look at my annual sales projections. So if I'm doing a million dollars, what is the average CEO making? On average, it's about 10% of gross sales. So your salary would be in there, your assistant salary would be in there, your social media, all your costs would be in there. So your profit, your net profit is after everything is paid, then what's left over? We need to plan for that as well. That's a great question, Amanda. I love it. Right, and, and in a similar vein also, Marika wants to know if they need to subtract costs first. Um, so in your, in, in chapter eight, math is money, money is fun. When you go to the financial projections, you'll see we'll have cost of goods and then you'll have fixed costs. Cost of goods are anything related to that service that you're providing. Fixed costs are your things like your phone, your electricity, your salaries that are fixed, right? Maybe not salespeople, that might be more var variable. And so then after the end of that number, then I want to add 10% so that I know I'm expecting profit inside of that. Makes sense. Ed would like to know, how do you rate a focused yet flexible mission statement? Oh, a mission statement is so fun to write. So in Leading a Powerful Business on page two, um, chapter two on page 43, I go into writing your mission statement. I go into how do you write one? I want it to be creative. It is a fun process. So we did it with our whole team. We got a whiteboard out and we put the words that represent us. Can you guess what words represent us, Kelsey? The words on your wall. <laughs> right, the words on my wall. If they go all the way up and from the words on our wall and the words that inspired us, then we started creating um, a phrase, right? A paragraph. Mm -hmm of our service, our commitment, our structure. So from there, then we created our mission statement, our value statement, and our guiding principles. The guiding principles are the actions we'll do daily in order to stay focused to hit the mission and the values of the organization. Juicy. <laughs> and that makes, that's actually really great though, that you have, um, you know, that is a reminder on your wall. I think that's really awesome. So you're constantly reminding yourself. I am. I come into, instead of having cheesy art on the wall, I come into the things that inspire me and inspire my clients, right? We have them everywhere, right? Right. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, so that I can get people to take action and feel the power because yeah. we just have to be reminded. Absolutely. And, you know, it, and it does happen sometimes where companies do start to stray from their mission or they forget what those founding ideas were that, you know, that they were supposed to be supporting. Right. Exactly. Uh, so Marie in the chat has more of a technical question. She would like to know if she's just starting out a business, does she need to, it scrolls so fast, does she need to immediately register her business as an LLC or can she operate for some time as an individual? 
Now you can start out as a sole proprietor. If you start out as a sole proprietor, I still want you to have a separate business bank account, right? So you can be doing business as your own name. So I have Susie Carter doing business as SC Consulting, right? So I'm an S Corp, right? So once you start getting some money, really the LLC, S Corp, C Corp are all taxation, right? Nonprofit, they're all taxation. That's all they are. So you wanna meet with your CPA and your accountant to go, what taxation do I, should I be using? If you're a small business, really uh, an S Corp gives us the most tax advantages. And we do go, but we go into that in chapter eight as well, right? Really looking at what do you recommend, so, you know, so that you can see, but you really need to talk to your CPA. I'm not a CPA, I'm not an accountant. I'm a rogue entrepreneur like you guys. I've just figured out this money thing, figured out this business thing and went, wait, let me help you. Let me teach you what took me so long to learn because I felt like such a ding dong, Kelsey. I'm like, it seems like everybody knows what these people are talking about. And I'm the only ding dong. And then I realized, well, we're all ding dongs. Let's put it in, lay, in plain English so that you go, what's step one, what's step two, right? And those 10 steps are the foundational roadmap that you'll start using inside of your business. That makes absolute sense. Oh, another person in the comments wants to go back to mission statements. And I have a feeling I know what you're going to say about this because libraries, we run with very strong mission statements. But, uh, Marika would like to know, does your mission statement, uh, does it grow as you grow? Or does it stay the same? My mission statement has stayed the same and consistent because when I put it together, it was so much bigger than I was. Like it made me want to do the pee pee dance. So your mission statement should be a little bit bigger, right? It should kind of mm -hmm. scare you. It, could, it should call you forth. Because you're saying, you're speaking it into existence. This is who I am, right? These are our values, right? So you don't want to get comfortable with it. If you feel like you outgrow it. So if your business takes a pivot, your business takes a different life of its own. Sometimes it does, right? We bring on different products and where you started is not where you are. And then you want to get back again with your team to go, is this relevant today? But for the most part, it stays consistent. Mine has been consistent for 10 years. And then I would also decide too, if you're going to also have an additional vision statement, which is a little bit, you know, different. Um, so our vision statement, like in libraries, I've been at libraries that have changed their vision as time has changed and the vision has to switch, but the mission itself might stay the same because we're still providing the same large goals. Right. When I like to put in, in lay terms, because this one always gets confusing for people, the mission is the fact. This is who we are. The vision is what's the global impact that you're going to make. Right. What is that? What's that thing we're going to stand for and we're calling people forth. And then the mission is this is the fact the values are integrity. They're caring. There's commitment. There's community. Like whatever those words are that resonate with you. And that's how you're going to care for your customers. So when I'm coaching my team, I'm always coaching from are we living in our values, making mm -hmm. business decisions in our values, you know, treating people with dignity and respect. So juicy. Right. Uh, that sounds great. Let's see. Uh, Marie has another question. She wants to know what was the most challenging part of writing your book, especially when you have full fledged when you have full fledged business with so many clients. And what was the most rewarding aspect to? Oh, girl, that is the truth. I had I, we had to schedule time in my calendar every single week, right? So when we first started, it was three days a week. Then it went to two days. Then it went to one day a week. Then it went to then it went to every other week, then it went to once a month. So with my writing partner and my editor, right? And then the most rewarding was when it was completed. <laughs> right? We're like, woohoo, it's completed. Phase one is completed, it's written, right? Then you went into phase two and phase three, which was, you know, and where it started, this was not the original cover, right? We had different covers, we had different reiterations of it, we had different pictures, right? So it's been this birthing process and you have to be flexible. Right, so you gotta be flexible in this process. You gotta listen to your market. What does your market want? Um, you know, the cover was all designed on market research. You know, I had a picture of me on it before. It was like me. <laughs> like, we love you and no. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm sure holding the actual book in your hand is the most rewarding thing because then that's your baby. It's actually when people are buying it, right? When you see That's people it. bought it and then they write a review and say, oh yeah. my God, I loved it. We had the best review. Someone's like, I just got my book and I started bawling. I'm like, oh God, I'm bawling because you're bawling, right? Just the excitement of it all. Absolutely. And I did see Publishers uh, Weekly did review your book. It was a fantastic review, by the way. Oh, it was. So, okay, good. I got to go look at it. Yay. Yes. So I did notice that. So, you know, we use that very heavy in library land when we make our collection development decisions. 
I love that. Thank you. <laughs> That's good to know. Let's see. Oh, and a couple of people have ordered your book, by the way, Diane, she just ordered the book. She can't wait. So Diane, make sure, Diana, make sure you uh, send that receipt to Susie via the email, Susie at SusieCarter.com. So for your extra goodies, um, we have time for a few more questions though. Mason wants to know what kind of help did you provide the success stories um, that you talked about tonight? Was it more coaching, marketing management, agent work? Could you talk a little bit more about your hands-on approach with these people? Yes, Mason, all of the above, right? <laughs> so a couple of them are in our program called Global Leadership, which is our year-long mastermind where you're being, we're hand-holding you through really the book. It's, you know, building your business plan, then working on your sales plan, your marketing plan, and I always believe that the clients that I'm working with, my business, your business is my business. I truly take it on as how do I make Mason the most money that we can make with our financial projections. And then some people went on one-on-one -on -one coaching. And what is one-on-one -on -one coaching? The book. Same content, just how I delivered it was differently, right? So if you don't have that kind of budget, then we baby step you in, but know that you're getting the exact same information. It's implementation and accountability. So we have a lot of trainings like this so that you can stay connected into the community, Mason. We'd love for you to come so that you can get the information you need when you need it, right? Which is delicious. And this book isn't chapter one, chapter two. It's like, wait, I need help with my sales right now. Great. Go to chapter six, go to page 198, print out my sales script. It's the same script I use to close $100,000 clients or $1,000 clients, right? So they're tangible tools that get you immediate results. Right. Uh, so that sounds really, that's really great. Um, just so you know, we did have someone ask again for the email address. Um, it is Susie at SusieCarter.com. I went ahead and put that in the chat again for anyone who needs that. Um, we have a couple of questions also in the Q&A. So I'd like to talk about this. This is very timely. I'm sure you understand. Many businesses and some entire industries have been completely wiped due to COVID-19. Now, I understand you're a coach, but what advice would you have to any business that is really struggling to stay afloat right now? What Girl, just we all to... got wiped out. Selena, you are I not know. alone. You are not alone. My business completely shifted. I had 35 live events gone overnight. And that was our book launch, right, Kelsey? That was yeah. like, I was, I was going to Ohio to do this thing. And then we all got shut down. So everything around the book got shut down. Everything around our live events got shut down. What we did is we looked at quicker, faster. What can we do to leverage this? So I have personal trainers that have a fitness studio. And what we've done now is, is taken their work into homes. And so if you wanted to have their training, you might bring you and another person. So it's cost effective or you and three other people, right? Because we can do five to 10 people in somebody's home. They can't go to a studio restaurants have been hit the hardest. I have restaurants that we coach and we had to look at what's our takeout process look like? What's our in order process takeout? How can we maximize the floor space? How can we look at our menu? Do we need to adjust pricing, right? Your pricing is based on capacity. So of course your pricing would go up, even though people are scared to death in service-based industries for pricing to go up. It has to. You're, when the demand is greater than the supply, we raise our prices. When you know that, when you know that and you logically know it, it takes away the fear to go, I have to, I can't serve a hundred clients anymore. Look at restaurants. They used to be able to turn tables so much faster and have double the amount of tables that completely reduced their capacity to about 25%. So if I look at that, I have to look at all the pricing and go, what adjustments can we make so that we're still profitable and we can still stay in business? So um, it was Selena, I think. I, we really need to look at your individual business and go, what, how can we be radical? How can we be radical? So that's a great uh, starting point for a lot of businesses. I know we have a lot of businesses here in Ohio that have, you know, really st been struggling with everything going on. Um, but it's not just us, obviously. It's the entire country. It's the entire country. Here's the great news. I want you to look at there is silver lining in this whole COVID thing. Before every business, maybe you were here and other businesses were here. It leveled the playing field. We all had to restart over. We all, business as usual is not business as usual. This is really sad. The marketing campaign for the book and all the copy, everything we did, we had to scrap it and rewrite it because now it was irrelevant. You can't talk about profit and yay, we're going to make money. And people are like, I don't have a job anymore. She's so insensitive. So we had to scrap it and reinvent it and start all over again. So it was radical. It was sad. I wanted to cry. But the reality was you've got to market to what the market needs. 
you've got to market to what the market needs, right? So I want you to look at, are you willing to be radical? Are you willing to do what's necessary? And it, look, listen, you can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. You have to find a community. You got to find a coach, whether it's me or somebody else, right? A, a community that can help you through this transition. Because the worst thing you want to do as an entrepreneur is suffer in silence and feel like you're all alone. And we always say, listen, you're in business for yourself, not by yourself. We want to help you get out of whatever it is that you're in. Right. Um, that's, that's some really great advice. Thank you. Um, we have a couple last quick questions before we end for the evening. Um, Chris would like to know, what is the best way to identify and test response from your target audience? So, so my clients, which I love, are the ones that really help me shape my portfolio and what's my product suite. So my first business, literally I was a ding dong and they would say, I want this and I'd go make the product. Now we do more focus groups and we bring our A clients. So you have A clients, B clients, and C clients. A clients are those clients that love and adore you and pay you and pay your prices and they buy everything that you have. You want to get a combination of your A clients and your B clients. Your B clients are good clients that you want to convert to A clients, right? They might be in a lower hanging, some, they might, like the, for you, they might come in and buy books every now and then. Those would be B. I'm an A client for you, right? I love books. I, I order them all the time. I, you know, I have a library. I have, I'm, a, I'm an education junkie, right? So I would be an A client. Then you look at what does your A client want to see and how can we bring that into the fold? What are they looking at? What do they see? Find the need, fill the need. Find the need, fill the need. It takes a little bit of market research, but it can be fun, right? You can do it on Zoom. You just get their ideas. What do they see that you don't see? Because sometimes I think you want one thing and they're like, we don't want that. We want this. I'm like, oh, okay. How much will you pay for that? <laughs> yes. When you're talking about your A clients, I'm totally thinking of our power patrons, our heavy users that are at every program. They're always in the library. So I'm pretty sure if you are connected with your customers, you know who those people are. So I yes, think you do. Yes. Okay. Two last quick questions for this evening. Um, Marika would like to know, does your group coaching starting anytime soon? If so, where can they find info on that? You can go to our website at suzycarter.com. And then all my social media handles are my name, Suzy Carter. Suzy Carter on Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Facebook, all the things is Suzy Carter. And our website, Suzy Carter, my name. Now that's C-A-R-D as in dollar and dinero, E-R. <laughs> Fantastic. And actually, you just answered that last question. How can people connect with you? So I know you have a very heavy online presence, so I'm sure people can find you, they can reach you. Um, and that's fantastic. So again, I'd like to thank you so much for coming this evening, um, both for the public and for you, Susie, for taking your time. I'm very excited about your book. I think you'll even help our library, like I said, with some marketing and just figuring out how we can make a boom in the library, so to say. Um, and if you need help with that, Kelsey, don't, don't you hesitate to reach out. I appreciate your support in supporting me with this book launch. I know, you know, things got crazy yes. in COVID. So I'm your sister in this journey, right? And if I'll, you need help with those entrepreneur things, you invite me, I'll show up. I will feel free to pass your information along to our administration department for those types of decisions. So thank you. Awesome. And everyone, the book is available courtesy of the Learned Owl Bookshop. That's learnedowl.com. Uh, we have the link in the description. If you purchase the book, email Susie, Susie at SusieCarter.com for your five free bonuses, lots of great information. Um, and again, Susie, thank you so much for taking your time this evening. It's a pleasure meeting you. And you are just such a bubbly person for our authors. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. I appreciate it. Alexander, thank you. Our IT guy, thank you. I forgot your yes. name. Yes, thank you to Alexandra and John from IT oh. for working behind the scenes. Thank you so much. You made everyone um, an enjoyable evening. So I'm going to go ahead and end tonight's evening. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you for all the thank yous in the chat. Um, everyone was just wonderful, and this was a really fun event. So Thank you guys thank for playing. I look forward to making you millions. Let's do this <laughs> profit thing. Power your profit. Yes. Let's make some money, honeys. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Good night. Bye.